So I got this on eBay, a uh, copy of Swiv. It's the budget kicks version of Swiv. So it comes in this little box. It's not actually very big. Um, there it is, Swiv. This is the vertically scrolling shoot up. I do remember playing this back in the day, but only for a little bit. And uh, I seem to remember it being quite good, but I haven't played it for many decades now. So I thought it came up on eBay for not very much money, less than 10 pounds, I think. And I thought I'll buy that and see what it's like. And I've got the Amiga 600 out. Uh, to try it out and it doesn't say it works on the Amiga 600 but uh, I think it will. Uh, let's just have a quick look see if everything's in the box. I've not actually checked this yet. Oh look at this. The Kicks Complete Range. Ah <laughs> look Gary Lineker there he is. Gary Lineker Soccer. Four game compilation. Italy, Italy 1990 Super Skills, Superstar Soccer and Hot Shot. Huh. Oh this is interesting. Oh wow look at this. Coming soon to Kicks. Flimbo's Quest, Pirates, Solo Flight, Ninja Remix, Shadow Dancer, Summer Camp, Crackdown. There's loads. Yeah, look at all these budget games. Oh, Turrican 2, there it is. Did they do a Kicks version of that? I didn't realise that. Uh, is it on the list? Turrican 2. It's first on the list, of course it is. Turrican 2, of course, would be first on the list. Excellent, they did a lot of games. Um, titles not available at time of going to press, November 92. So that's when this was printed. So these are all the big box versions that go to, down to the budget version. What else have we got on here? Oh wow, look at this. It's too big to completely fit on here. Can you kick it? Yes you, yes, you can. Check out the value, kickstart the fun with this great range of games. Wow, there is so I didn't know they did all these so many. Oh, they did Creatures, Commodore 64 on Kicks. I never knew that happened. Crackdown, Hunter's Moon, Summer Camp. There's Turrican 2. Never knew they did that on the Kicks, on the Kicks uh, re-release. Gauntlet 2. I think I used to have a copy of that somewhere. I think I've got the box for that, actually. Um, yeah, there's loads. Wow. Oh, and there's Turrican as well. Mission Impossible 2, Turbo Outrun, Bionic Commando. Absolutely tons of them. Indiana Jones. I might have owned a lot of these back in the day because, you know, I couldn't afford the games when they were full price. So you ended up buying them on the, when they came out on the budget label for a lot less. That's really good. So a little bit of history there. Um, electronic Arts. Electronic Arts Registration Code. What's that got to do with this? Absolutely nothing. This is nothing to do with Electronic Arts. That's just been stuck in the box and nobody knew what it was. So there we go. So it's in quite good condition. It's just a single disc game. And I don't know what year this came out. Let's have a look at the disc surface. Oh no. Oh no. I can see a big groove in the middle of it there. Look at that. I don't know if you can catch that in the light. Oh, that's, that's a disaster. Oh yeah, there's a massive groove in the middle of the disc. I don't think that's gonna work. It might work, but that doesn't look good. It's not mold or anything. I don't know if I can catch that in the light. I don't know if you can see it there. I've not got high hopes for this now. This could just be a write-off. Well, let's put it in, see what it does. Let's get rid of the Amiga test kit. I was just making sure the Amiga booted. Uh, that'll be disappointing if this doesn't work. Maybe it'll boot um, some part of the game and not others. But yeah, that's a bit disappointing. It's got a huge groove through the disc. And that's the trouble with buying these old discs, really. And that's why a lot of people are just doing Gotex and stuff, because, you know, it's one thing getting the drive working itself. And then once you've got a drive working, you've got to find a disc that works as well. So let's boot it and see what we get. Oh, it didn't sound good. It's loading something. This doesn't sound good at all, does it? Oh, well, it's got to, oh, it's got this far. Now, one of the things I remember about this game was, um, and, and I may be remembering this wrong, but it was quite interesting in the fact that um, it had like a, I suppose nowadays we call them streaming levels in a game where you have a huge open world like GTA or something like that. And as the, the game progresses forward, um, you actually like 
load in part of the level as you're playing the level and then it seamlessly transitions into the next bit like it never happened and i believe this game does that which is actually quite impressive so it actually streams the, the levels from the floppy disk as you're playing the game um if i'm remembering it correctly this so far though is working Oh, it's quite a nice title screen. Sylvester McCoy's on the title screen. <laughs> I, uh, 60, Commodore 64 graphics are listed on there. That's weird. Rob Whittaker. Oh, the music. Right, let's see if the game loads. So this is one of this game was actually two player. One of you played in a jeep, and the other one played in a helicopter. That was its big selling point. This is the follow up to Siltworm, I think. Hey, there we go. So it, even though with that big groove in the disc, it's actually working. I suspect there'll come a part in this game where it just doesn't work anymore. I have no auto fire, so just gonna have to go for it. Ship moves quite fast, actually. It looks quite nice. It's got the shadows on the floor and everything. Oh my word, it's getting busy already here. Oh, I was going being too greedy there. Don't know how many lives I've got. I also don't know if stuff comes from behind you in this game. Maybe it does. Oh, it's train. There's a train. Oh yeah, it's loading stuff from the disc now. So it's like like loading the level as I'm playing. Oh my word, it's getting busy there. Oh, is this like a mini boss? Oh, good lord. How do I fight this guy? <gasps> oh, dear. I don't know where I'm supposed to be shooting him. Oh, is it in the middle there? Oh, I wasn't watching. I'm supposed to be shooting him right in the middle. This is the Amiga Format Review from, let me just check, April 1991 of SWIV, Special Weapons Interdiction Vehicle, Silkworm 4. It says the game scrolls vertically and could well be considered the sequel to the classic shoot 'em up Silkworm, which I always thought it was, but maybe it's just considered the sequel? I don't know. Ah, and here it is. It says the game itself takes place over one incredibly long scrolling level, which blends from one area to another. The ghost town, the desert, the lake, the Zevious land uh, are just a few areas that you come across. New areas are loaded from disc as you play to make a single virtually seamless mission. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. It is actually streaming the levels, which is pretty impressive. For one thing, this means you have to stay on your toes since there are now, it says there are now interlevel breaks. I think it means there are now no interlevel breaks for you to get your breath back. So I think that's a typo in there. The game is broken up to a certain extent by the appearance of the odd guardian, which are fairly easy to spot. There we go, that's pretty good. Seriously wild, intensely violent. They liked it. Oh, and there are power-ups. Uh, did I see any of those when I was playing or not? I'm not sure. And the verdict is 92%. Incredibly drawn graphics with a wonderful military feel. Stereo sound creates amazing atmosphere. Helicopter and Jeep have su superb controls. Um, simultaneous two-player, frantic shoot em up Yeah, that is really good. So Amiga Format, April 91, they liked it. And they did mention about the um, streaming levels, but that's actually quite an impressive thing. I don't think a lot of games were actually doing that at the time. And it was $24.99. So uh, I imagine that would probably would have been about £10 when it was sold on the Kicks label, maybe. Do 
So I don't know if the, the trains will only affect when the Jeep's in play, when you're on two-player. So did it load a bit more from the disc then? I think it did. Get that. Is that a shield or something? I think that's a shield. Yeah, it's, lo it's loading from the floppy now. So I wonder if they're trying to like just load in little tiny bits of the game as we go without like using too much CPU power or something. Oops, I was watching the floppy light and wasn't looking at the game. Frame rate's gone bad here. Oh, there is stuff coming from behind as well, so got to watch out for that. So I think that the, the scrolling just stopped there, and that's maybe because it's waiting for the loading or something. There you go. So I think we're on a new section of the level that's maybe been loaded in as we were playing. Ooh, I got absolutely murdered. Don't know how many lives I've got. I can't even tell. Is it one left? Don't know if I can go over the top of the tanks without dying. Like, maybe the jeep can't, but I can. Oh, I've still got another life. Oh. I am not figuring out that boss. <laughs> I keep like, it's like I'm actually crashing into, specifically crashing into the uh, missiles here. Those things can't be shot by the looks of it. Oh, maybe they can now. Oh, everything's getting really hard to shoot. What? What's the point in these? Oh, good lord. These are some big sprites and stuff. Oh. Oh, I'm in real trouble here. There's so much going on. Oh, I think that's it. I think I'm done. I destroyed 291 enemies. I completed 19% of the game there. Well, this disc actually works. There we go. So that is Swiv on the Amiga, which is actually, that was a half decent game. I remember this being all right back in the day. But yeah, I remember the, the, the funny part about this game was the fact that it could load from the floppy as it was playing. I wouldn't say funny, that's quite common in games nowadays, but actually like loading as you play is, is just something I don't think was done back then. So this might be one of the only games that does it. So it's quite, uh, you know, an impressive feat. For the Amiga anyway. So as you can see there was no like stage one, stage two, you just keep playing forever like you would in a open world game or something like that. So that's really good. Um, that's quite a good game. I'll probably play that on some live streams and something at some point, see how far we can get. That is Swiv for the Amiga and the Kix budget re-release. And uh, a very good game and, and technically kind of ahead of its time in the way it does this like streaming level stuff. I'm not sure of any other game actually that does that as you play. Yeah, excellent.